Now for fetal heart rate monitoring. Hey guys, I'm Nurse Mike here with Nurse Barbara and today we're going to be going over all the key points that you need to know for your exams as well as the NCLEX. Now fetal heart rate monitoring is a way to identify fetal well-being and oxygenation during labor. During labor, it is vital to monitor both the uterine contractions and the baby's heart rate as an abnormal reading may indicate that the baby is not getting enough oxygen or other problems are occurring. Now there are two types of devices used. For external fetal monitoring, the sono or ultrasound is used for the baby's heart rate and the toco or tocometer is used for the mom's uterine activity. The mother's abdomen is palpated for fetal position to find that point of maximal impulse, the PMI which is located between the baby's shoulder blades, and this is where the baby's heart rate can be heard the loudest. Now this is the best place to put the fetal heart rate sensor. Now for Mike for some dramatization purposes. The point of maximum impulse. Thanks for that, Mike. Now the PMI is found between the baby's shoulders. Now if the baby is cephalic or head down, it will be placed on the mother's lower abdomen. But if the baby is breech, the monitor will find the PMI in the upper abdomen. Now board exams love to test on this and they often ask students to click on the area of the abdomen where the PMI would be found based on the fetal position. So be sure to write that down. And finally, we have a second sensor, which is the contraction monitor sensor. And this is placed high up on the mother's abdomen to monitor the contractions. Now, a more accurate but invasive method of monitoring the baby is an internal fetal monitor, also called a fetal scalp electrode, the FSE. And this is typically only used for high-risk pregnancies. This method uses a thin wire electrode and is placed directly on the baby's scalp through the cervix. This method gives better readings as it's not affected by movement. It can only be used after the amniotic sac has ruptured and the cervix is open to at least two centimeters in dilation. Now, the FSC does come with a high risk of infection since we are placing a foreign object into the mother's vagina and onto the baby's head. Now for an ATI question. Which of the following must be present before the nurse initiates internal fetal monitoring? And this would be a cervical dilation of at least two centimeters. Okay, so now let's review how a normal fetal heart rate monitor tracing looks. And then we will go through the top seven strips to know for the NCLEX and your nursing school exams. As you can see- Hey there, nursing student, listen up. Did you know only 20% of our videos are here on YouTube? You're missing out on over 900 videos not on YouTube, plus 500 visual study guides that follow along every video and a massive quiz bank to test your knowledge. All neatly organized in our new app. Try it for free. Visit simplenursing.com today. See, there are two strips here showing squiggly lines, similar to an EKG. The fetal heart rate is on top, which we always assess first, and the mother's contractions are on the bottom. Those double red lines represent one minute in time. So now on to Nurse Mike for a discussion of fetal heart rate. Thanks, Nurse Barbara. Point of maximum... I'm just kidding. Okay, so for some key terms for the fetal heart rate baseline. So normal fetal heart rate is 110 to 160 beats per minute. Variability is basically how jiggly or wiggly the line is. So as labor progresses, we expect the fetal heart rate to have wiggly lines. This is called variability. So it means a happy baby. And it means the neurosystem is intact. So in general, we say the more wiggly, the more happy the baby. Now we have different types of variability, kind of like a traffic light. The red light is where we stop what we're doing and run to get the baby out. This red light is absent variability. We have no jiggly, which is not good. The baby's not responding and is at risk for major complications and even death. The baby needs to come out right now via C-section. Now the next big one is minimal variability. This is our yellow light. It is seen as a flatter line and kind of looks sleepy and sad, typically meaning that the baby is either sleeping or in trouble. And it's very concerning since we see less jiggly, so basically less happy of a baby. The next one is moderate variability. Now this is our green light. 
It's normal and the desired finding. So the memory trick, for moderate, just think it's the most desired. And the last one here is marked variability. We see jagged jiggles. So this is our stressed out baby. But this baby is okay, as it typically is seen during labor as the baby is being pushed out. Now the most commonly tested are the minimal and moderate variability. So please be sure to focus on these top two squiggles. Okay, the next key term to know is accelerations. These are temporary increases in the fetal heart rate, and it indicates great oxygenation for the baby. We call these happy little mountains. So cute. These are little bonus points that shows the baby is doing well. So the memory trick, the baby gets A's for accelerations. Now the next is decelerations. We see big dips from the baseline, and there are three different types. We always look at the shape and timing with each contraction. So first up is early D cells. Now these are good. They look like shallow bowl-shaped dips that mirror the mother's contraction. As you can see on our little chart, the top line and bottom line are attracted to each other, kind of like a magnet. Then it goes back to baseline between contractions. It indicates head compression, which is totally expected during labor. And the memory trick here, it's good to be early with early D cells. Or you can think you wanna show up early to the party with that dip for the chip. So don't be late with that chip dip. The party's gonna be angry. The next D cell is variable D cells. So just look for the Vs here. It is very concerning with very deep, sharp V dips. All right, that wraps it up. Thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to take your quiz and download the study guides. And also feel free to share the love, share with a classmate and even your instructor. See you guys in the next videos.